our pups have a lower tolerance to life. That's what I call it, a lower tolerance to life. When I grew up, you could drop a pot lid on the floor and the dogs are like, hey, what's that? Nowadays, you drop a pot lid, they're like, oh my god, it almost ate me, I almost died. Okay? They have a lower tolerance to life. So we have to build their tolerance to life and build that resilience. Okay? So they're happy because besides being a liability and maybe biting somebody or yourself, okay, they also need to be happy. How many of you guys have ever suffered anxiety? Ever? Okay. How's that feel? Wonderful. Yeah, I know. Feels like crap. Okay. Your dogs, unless they're in their own home and nobody else is coming over, they're feeling that all the time. Okay, and so they're not happy. And you know what? That raises their cortisol and their adrenaline and it lowers their autoimmune system. The last 30 years of breeding has given those dogs those low, lower tolerances life. He looks beautiful, but he's here for a reason. So he, he couldn't be, you know, technically a service dog. Every dog in here. Okay, this is genetics, guys. We see they, they're beautiful, they got great confirmation, you know, and they get along with their family. But take them to the farmer's market and tell me how they react. And then, and we'll see some more behavior, especially when we get ready to meet and greet. I know these two are fearful over here. I've seen this one in action, okay? And, and she's, uh, she looks innocent, she's not so innocent. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna teach you guys how to change that today, okay? I want you guys to uh, know that aggressive, submissive dogs, it starts with their genetics, so you guys, it's not your fault, okay? But we can change that, and you guys can add to it unknowingly. That's why I'm teaching you guys how to change that, okay? So their fear starts with genetics, and then something happens. Remember that lower tolerance of life? Drop that pot lid, and they're like, oh my God, okay? So it usually takes about 200 good meetings to help rip around your dog, okay? to other dogs, to people, and to unfamiliar things, okay? And we need to teach them not to fear those, all right? They must learn also, if they don't totally overcome, because this is a genetic thing, some dogs will change faster than others, okay? It's, it depends on how ingrained into their genetics it is and how much work you guys put into it into teaching them that it's okay, all this stuff is okay, and your tone of voice matters too. Nutrigenetics, you guys, this is scientifically proven that what your dog eats can affect the way it influences their genes. I am not a vet, okay, but I have seen, and all my dogs are grain free, okay, I have seen dogs, one of my client's dogs, they were calm, and then they get, got a bag of grain food, and the dog actually bit her brother-in-law. Also understand that dogs do not rationalize, they, but they react to their environment, they react to you. So if you're walking and you see a dog and they don't, they're gonna react to you and turn around, okay? And they think that they think that, that dog is gonna come and get them. They don't understand that you're afraid your dog's gonna go eat that dog. Okay, you need to recognize as pet parents that you're the leaders, and you have to recognize your dog's fears and frustrations and their energy and understand also how your energy affects your dogs. If they don't see you as pack leaders, they're not going to gain confidence, okay? So when we do the meet and greet in here, I'm gonna teach you guys a couple of techniques to calm yourself before we do it. If you're really that scared, I'll do it for you. So dog's instinct, do you guys know what an instinct, the dog's instinct is when they get scared? Fight or flight. Also what I call doggy denial. You ever see those dogs that Something's over here scary. Well, you don't know because they're over here going like this. Oh, look, 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 mom, look. Oh, wow, look. If I look over here, I won't see this and it won't come get me. Also, the head down, hiding, the ears down or up. You guys got to remember, you got to take in the breed into consideration. If they're a, a basset and their ears are always down and then they kind of perk up a little bit and they're alert, okay, that's something to look at. Um, if her ears are up all the time, then that wouldn't be matter, but maybe if she put them back, laid them down, that would tell you, okay. Um, hair up on the back of their neck, tail down or tail up, or a wagging tail, you gotta be careful, because sometimes that tail wags, but it's like, mm, I, wanna, I want to meet you, I wanna know you, but I'm still scared, okay? So you guys gotta kinda watch the whole thing. 
all right? Trembling, cowering, excessive barking, growling, and most overlooked is the overjoy. Okay, so when they have too much excitement because their body's going like this and they don't know what to do with it. So be happy that they have overjoy and they don't have aggression. Okay. Looking constantly at the dog parent or following you. My dog's loyal because he follows me everywhere in the bathroom, everything like that. And that goes red flag. Why? Because you're a security blanket. They can't go anywhere without you. If that's the case, then you're going to need to learn how to teach that dog to be confident on his own. So, if okay. left uncorrected and without boundaries, the behavior can escalate and become deadly quickly. And they learn that that's acceptable behavior. And it, guess what? It doesn't make them any more confident in you. Okay? And they stay fearful. They don't want, we don't want them to live in fear, guys. Okay? But they don't know how to be not fearful because it's like that anxiety that we get inside, they have no idea how to control it. It depends on how well you are aware of your own energy and your dog's energy. You guys know when you're sick, your dogs come to you? They know that stuff, you guys. They feel that energy. Heal out your own anxieties. Really work on yourself. Why do I say this? Because I had a dog, they got a a red flag dog that had bitten from the animal service center and they don't teach you about them, they don't put you through a class, they don't do nothing and they thought they could handle it. Um, they brought the dog to me, I worked with her a couple months, she was out there, one dog even pulled the ball out of her mouth, she didn't react and then they took her home. I didn't double check to make sure he was using his tools, that he was putting the dogs back together and somebody opened the door, she jumped down to go attack their other dog again and dad got in the middle of it. That's why I tell you use your tools. Okay, we'll talk about them in a few minutes. Okay, and they put her down themselves. But mom had really bad PTSD. Okay, she when the dogs had muzzle, they met for the first time. She had a muzzle. She wouldn't even look. When you have PTSD and anxieties, you can't control how your body's feeling. Okay, it's just a reaction. So the dogs can't either. So that's why I really tell you guys, it's a whole family thing and the whole family has to be involved. Because if a dog, especially if they're an aggressive dog, okay, and you have two of you are setting the rules but the other person isn't, that's seen as a weak link, okay? And that still has fear in the family, okay? So that dog may still not be 100%. When your dog is nervous like that, you guys, their cortisol's up and their adrenaline's up immune system's down, okay? And they're not living very happy. How do we change that behavior? We gotta increase their self-esteem. We gotta establish pack leadership for the whole family, all humans, okay? How do you do that? Energetically, you're not nervous and scared all the time. This happens even with the training. If you ask your dog to sit and you don't think they're gonna sit, guess what, your vibration's kinda like this and they're like, yeah, whatever. You don't mean it, I'm not gonna sit. Right. So you need to admit that sense of confidence and calm energy. There's also breathing and OMG, okay? So if you guys are nervous, it is scientifically proven, you take a deep breath, you hold it to five, seven seconds, you release it, it will change peptides in your brain and calm you. Because if you're nervous when we get ready to do meet and greet, I've gone up to a lady and when I got about this far away, I could feel the energy off of her this far. And I was like, you need to breathe because you're gonna get me bit. Because your dog's feeling that energy, okay, and he blames it on me. So it's really important that you guys have that confidence, and that's what I'm here to teach you. So when you guys get really nervous and scared, take those deep breaths. Visualize a hula hoop coming down from top and pushing all that fear in you out. And if you can't calm it down, I want you guys to get pissed off, okay? Because if you don't teach your dog in a way that he understands, you, it might be his life, okay? And pissed off, okay, when you guys are scared, this is your energy, right? It's really erratic. When you're pissed off, your energy is still scared a little bit, but it's more solid. So I'd rather you're pissed off, and if you have to be pissed off because you need to teach this dog in a way that he understands, or else he could be killed, then use that. The other way to calm yourself, this is energy medicine. Donna Eden teaches it. Uh, Bradley Nelson teaches emotion code. We are having anxieties because of something that happened when, previously. When we were little, maybe we don't remember. I have lots of those, okay, or I did have. I want you to number between one and 10 how anxious, nervous you feel, or any emotion less than love. Put your hand on your forehead, put your fingers over the top of your head. And a lot of times if you close your eyes, it blocks out everything else so you can just think about that thing that has you stressed. Sit there till that number gets to zero. 
If you do not, it will come back just as high. Will it come back? Yes, it may. It depends on how much trauma you have in there. You listen to all the energy healers, we get trauma in layers, so it's like peeling an onion. To get to that root, you have to peel this one, that one, that one, okay? So if you keep it down to zero, then guess what? After a while, you, will not have to, you won't even have a reaction, okay? People will come up and call me a, hey, you're a F and B, and I'm like, how's that working for you? The relationship between your and dog matters a lot. So you need to make sure that you have calm energy. The, the smallest changes can make your dogs react and go back to the way they were. You have more people at your house, you work longer hours, you, have, um, you get another dog. Oh, that's really messing up the whole thing, the household, okay? Right. Sometimes it has to be more than encouragement. It has to be commanding. This is the way it is, because you're pack leaders. Okay. You guys know when that little kid comes running through the the, the gravel and he slips and he falls and it's not that bad. And what's he do? Gets up and keeps going, okay? But what if mom's there and goes, oh, Miho, are you okay? He screams bloody murder, right? Okay, your dogs are the same. It's up to you to teach them confidence. My granddaughter, she knocks herself down. I go, wow, let me, did you hurt my floor? Let me see, let me check out that battle scar you got. Let me see, she goes, look, grandma. And then we also have pup tapping, which if your dog is, um, goes through a trauma, you can tap them out right then and there, and that won't stay in their body. And this is for prevention, okay? I work with very aggressive dogs, but I very rarely have an issue happen. Why? Because I prevent it by watching their language and their energy. And Proper conditioning and reprogramming works for these guys. Guys, your dogs are amazing. They can learn bite control, how hard to bite, how soft to bite, um, how hard to play. So they can, they're amazing.